friends. Hey, it's Alicia, author of the book, Don't Be a Stranger and Don't Be a Stranger to Grief for Dan and Fields Consultant um, and provider in the mental health communities. I wanted to do a reading today from a book called Eight Dates by John Gottman and Julie Schwartz Gottman. I believe there's also co-authors, uh, Doug Abrams and Rachel Abrams uh, down at the bottom. So I don't know if they're co-authors or contributors to the book, but I'm loving the start of this book and I love to use my channel to share readings and resources and tips and tricks and things I come across in life for enhancement of self-care, whether it's self-care from the inside out in my mental health world or from the outside in um, with the products that I represent in my Rodan and Field Skin and Hair Care business. Um, I don't do a whole lot of monitoring of the channel, so I don't hop on here to bring in comments and chat and conversation per se. I, you know, if you'd like to support me, I appreciate any orders through my Rodan and Fields business or orders of my book and reviews on what you found helpful. Um, but otherwise, I just hope that what you find here um, will help serve you along your journey of either personal or professional development. So that said, I'm sitting in a corner off on the side corner of a street and I just wanted to hop on while I was inspired and it's kind of quiet. So hopefully we don't hear too much um, traffic and background noise. So I apologize if that does happen. Um, so I'm specifically going to read you a few excerpts out of the, I believe it's the introduction. It's called The Conversations That Matter. This is page four is where I'm going to start. And I've highlighted several sections over the course of a few pages that I wanted to just share with you um, as a bit of a preview to how this book um, will serve. And I, I tell you, there is just so much goodness in here. Um, and these are essential conversations for a lifetime of love. And it's whether you are in the stages of dating someone, whether you're in the stages of fostering and furthering a relationship toward marriage, toward commitment, um, whether you're already married and you want to foster closer intimacy and a really strong foundation and recommit uh, as the years go by. So here it talks about make dedicated non-negotiable time for each other a priority and never stop being curious about your partner. Be, uh, the big secret to creating a love that lasts and grows over time is simple. Make dedicated, non-negotiable time for each other a priority and never stop being curious about your partner. Don't assume that you know who they are today just because you went to bed with them the night before. I love that line. In short, never stop asking questions, but ask the right kinds of questions. And they clarify, sorry about the background noise, like I said, I'm out in public. <laughs> um, they clarify op open-ended questions that can't just be answered with one, one word answer. So you don't want to ask yes or no questions. And they give some great examples, by the way, of what this is. And they talk about you basically want to be able to generate intimate conversations, understand why your partner believes what they believe, does what they do, and is who they are. Open-ended questions lead to conversations that will make you fall in love or help you decide to make a long-term commitment or keep you in love. They talk about there being eight topics that these eight conversations touch on. The topics include, uh, let's see, hold on, I had it here, trust, commitment, uh, trust and commitment, conflict, sex, money, family, fun, adventure, and then growth and spirituality is the final one. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, and dreams. So we've structured these into eight dates for you to go on and provide step-by-step -step exercises in this book and open-ended questions to ask one another on each date. Great relationships are built on respect, empathy, and a profound understanding of each other. Eight conversations you and your partner should have before you commit to each other or once you have committed to each other as well as throughout the years whenever again it's time to recommit is what this book touches on. So the, the further along, of course, you get into the book, you're gonna see those examples. I'm not gonna get into them in this video, but I wanna just plant a seed. I encourage you to look into this book. Um, I've actually been to a workshop at the Gottman Institute in Seattle, and it is fabulous. The work that they put out, um, I've referenced multiple times over in the clinical work that I do in my professional world. Life always shows up with all of its stresses and strains and crises, and how you manage these together can ultimately make or break you. Happily ever after simply means that both partners are known, valued, and accepted for who they are and who they are becoming. I love that because that never has to stop, right? It really shouldn't stop. Um, the ideas behind these eight dates and the commitment to deep listening help couples come back closer together. We encourage you to take the time now to talk about the subjects that you will ultimately that will ultimately determine your happiness or misery. And if they help you decide that you're not right for each other, you will save yourselves years of heartache. 
The goal is to be able to love your partner more deeply each and every year that you're together. Have the conversations that will strengthen your relationship and reduce conflict. Return to those times when you would stay up all night talking and couldn't wait to learn more about each other. Nothing predicted how couples would feel after a short date. So basically they talk about all those algorithms that talk about how two people could match. They're kind of useless. There's been research that says they don't really help much. Um, and then they go on to describe a study. Women preferred t-shirts of men who were the most genetically diverse from themselves on the major histocompatibility complex of an immune system. These were worn by men for two days. Then women picked out the one that smelled the best. We are in fact attracted to many kinds of people who are very different than ourselves. Women and couples were genetically diverse from an, who were genetically diverse from another, reported having a higher degree of sexual satisfaction, um, and, and the others were actually at more risk of infidelity and lack of satisfaction. So all the algorithms for the dating websites are no better than actually pairing two strangers at random. So let's see, they go on to talk about how they collected hundreds of hours of recordings from couples as they collected what they needed for this research. Um, staying in love takes a level of vulnerability that isn't always comfortable and some people have trouble talking about topics like sex and intimacy, discussing growth and spirituality. Some find it difficult to discuss money matters. You might worry, will the conversation lead to a fight? What if we don't understand each other's point of view? What if we have doubts about our differences? All of this is okay. We are going to teach you how to ask open-ended questions and really listen to each other's answers. And we will give you clear guidelines about how to make conversations creative and not combative. If you avoid conflict now, you are guaranteed to have more conflict later. The early part of a relationship, besides the fun and infatuation, is about establishing trust and a shared future. Your differences can enrich the relationship. It would be boring to be married to yourself. That's called being single. Differences attract us at first, and yet we can find ourselves in relationship trouble when we try to change those differences later. And how many of us can say that we're guilty of that? I get it. Learning to understand and accept the ways in which you're different is key. One of the great gifts of relationship and marriage is the ability to see the world through the eyes of another person, intimately, deeply, profoundly. Approach the mystery that is your partner with curiosity. Your relationship and your life will be immeasurably enriched for doing so. And just a few examples of some of the questions that they go on to describe. Looking back over the years, what moments stand out as the really hard times in your relationship? What helped you to stay together? Of all the people in the world, what led you to decide that this was the person that you wanted? Was that an easy or difficult decision? Think of a couple that you know who has a good relationship and another one whose relationship isn't so good and what's different about them? How would you compare your relationship to each of these couples? And how is your parents' relationship similar or different from your own? So I'll stop there, but the next section goes into what are some of the critical qualities um, that determine potentially uh, rates of potential for divorce or separation? What are the qualities that are essential? A focus on positive versus negative. Focus on building your partner up and, and focusing on their character. Um, and not minimizing some of the positives while magnifying some of the challenges. So I really can't recommend it enough. I've, I've really enjoyed reading it so far and I can already tell that there's gonna be such incredible material here. Um, and so anyway, thanks for watching. Mwah! Welcome to my world, bye.